The Lord Jesus Christ in his resurrection was not like Adam who had the breath of life breathed into him. When he was raised, he had the power to breathe life into everyone else, even as God had breathed into the first Adam. He is one who is the life-giving, risen Christ through the power of the Spirit. And so we see the last Adam is far greater than the first Adam. Now, when you think about the first and the last, what is that suggesting? Even in the names, this one who's now coming uh, it, in salvation and finally for the great glorification and hope, he's the last Adam. You know what that means? There's nobody after him that matters. And so we have to say boldly to our Muslim friends, Muhammad cannot be the final prophet. The last Adam alone has that position. No one can come after him. He culminates the history of redemption. The last Adam. He's the one that gives us this great picture of the imperishable, of glory, of power, of a spiritual body, because he gives us of his life-giving spirit. Then he says in the next verse, verse 46, but it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. He's saying you need to realize that God had a plan right from the beginning, but it goes through the history of the natural order to get to the supernatural. We can never reverse the order. Adam is first, and the last Adam is second. And to explain this further, in verse 47, he says, the first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven, 